Hello there and welcome to a full coverage of BS7671. I say full. Not word for word coverage, but a a training coverage of BS7671, 18th edition. Um, this first video is just an introduction, so an introduction to this series. What we're going to do is we're going to actually deliver training material like like would be in a classroom environment via online videos and if you are in the Facebook groups already you'll probably be aware that there are there's going to be some streams maybe at the weekend or in the evenings as well some of you guys work evenings some some of you guys are available to do some feedback and some Q&A and some training and some development on this but here is the delivery of the material as a vod and we'll do we'll do some live streams on um with training if need be we're going to go through the book, so do make sure that you have a copy of BS7671. Um, guys, notes for your on-site guide. We can refer to them. I may even refer to um, some other guides notes as well later on as we go through. But do make sure that you've got a legit hologram in your um, your regulations book, and you know make sure that you've had a little bit of time to go through it. Now. If, if your objective to watching these is to just get a, bit of, a little bit of information to then go and pass an exam, um, you probably best just just um, skipping it really, because uh, this is going you know, to take a while and it's it's not really suited for you. What we're going to do here is actually go through the book and we're going to translate the book. We're going to actually take this this blue thing and we're going to actually make it become a tool, make it become a reference document that you understand and that you actually know how to use instead of a book that you think is an exam that you have to commit to every three or four years for you to be able to carry on doing what you do every day. When we actually do design work, we do testing work, we always have to do it in compliance with this standard as well as other standards. So it's very important that we actually understand this standard. I work with many electricians and quite often they always, especially with inspection and testing, they pick on the they they pick on a common six to a dozen things that they know in the regulations, buried cable depths, additional protection, um, you know things like that, division of installation, but they they have because they don't have a a a common uh, or a, a developed understanding or they haven't got a fresh understanding, they kind of they kind of they kind of just become a bit complacent with that, and a lot of their inspections just look the same you know the observations are found are the same and some things creep through because they were a little bit unaware of some other regulations that were in this book so it is very important to stay up to date now we're not going to try to learn it word for word um because that is just that that just sounds like hell what we're going to do is we're going to understand the the purpose of the book the structure of the book the format of the book we will highlight a lot of the key areas in the book but uh, the bigger picture is we need to understand how the book works, how the book is to be used. And if you're thinking again, if you're thinking of exam, I won't be training you to pass an exam. I'll train this to understand the regulations. Passing an exam is just a natural side effect. And you will pass. But it's just a side effect of this. I don't train to pass. All right, so that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to actually develop our understanding of these regulations. And we're going to use them, and we're going to move forward with them. All right. Saying that, if there are some areas of material that are heavily present in exams, from my experience, I may reference it just to give you a little hint that this area needs a little bit deeper reference or a deeper um, understanding to. Um, if I forget to do that, but when I go back and edit it, I'll probably put a little marker on, such as an exam laptop logo, um, something like that, just to kind of highlight that. But um, other than that, yeah. Um, a couple of things we want to talk about to start with. So we, we understand BS7671 came out 2nd of July, published, and we have this current six month window till the 1st of January 2019. Now, it is evident that um, the likes of Electrical Safety Council and a few training organisations are mentioning that from, I think, June in 2019, they won't allow you to maintain registered electrician status unless you have the 18th edition. So a lot of push. There's a lot of pressure for you to update, for you to upgrade. Um, so a lot of electricians are being pushed into making training decisions either by going with what's most affordable which is quite often just a 
an, a training to pass the exam solution, or you're obviously finding it hard to find the time to actually do that. So hopefully this 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 material will help. Um, towards the end of it, there is a possible exam solution that I, I already have introduced to the Facebook community, um, which we could work with, but, but you know, you're not you're not committed to that. By all means, contact your local training centres. I can provide you with a um, We'll do a mock. We'll do like a little mock exam scenario, and I'll provide you with um, some kind of evidence of that training experience as well, so you can pass that as evidence. If um, they will probably all they'll ask for is money, to be honest with you, but you can you have it as evidence that you have the you know you have carried out training and you have maintained you know you have achieved some level of development before you do an exam. But all that will be done towards the end. Couple of things that we need to understand about the actual standard itself. Um, if you open up the regs book, you're like, oh god, you know, you, that might be the first thing that you did. You probably grabbed it and you just went, and you're like, Jesus. What I want you to do right now is find part seven, all right, right at the beginning of part seven. Okay, so, you know, I don't normally do page numbers, but for the sake of completeness right now, uh, page 239, alright, I'm on page 239. What I also want you to do is, so you put your finger in there, I want you to find the beginning of part one. Alright, which is... Page 14. Now, when you actually hold that amount in your hand, and you can see, you can see that there's... A whole that that amount there in my hand, that is the main structure of the book. That's what we're mainly focusing on. All this other stuff, all this other stuff in here, is reference material that will repeat the structure we cover in this section, or we'd have already gone to that area in doing this section. So when you look at the book and you think about how big it is. We're actually mainly going to focus our attention for probably 90% of the training time on this little section, this little, this little, um, what is it? It's about, well, it's less than half, that's for sure. All right, that's what we're going to focus on because the remainder of this chunk is all past seven, which is obviously supplementing areas of the main book and reference material, which we'd have obviously touched on or you'll you know you'll you'll have enough time okay so when you actually grab the book and you look at all of that forget that forget that it's 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 a simple layout structure which we'll discuss in a minute um i have a couple of slides this is obviously the training material i do so something i normally talk about is um who um you see the iet and bsi i also have a an e5 sticker on mine um same as my uh my guidance notes but um, the IET, obviously, the Institute of Engineering Technology, um, they they uh, provide JPLs. You know, they they are the the the. Uh, oh, try to say something nice. Um, I don't know. There's JPL sixty four. That's the committee. Numbers of pools of people beat together. Tea and biscuits. Talk regs. Stuff happens. Um, I can do an explain. I can do a big video on it. That's not for here. That's for another video, because it will go completely off topic. But that, they obviously that's the uh, the engineering technical committee, and then you have BSI, the British Standards Institute, who are the publishers of the standard, and they publish many other standards, many other British standards that we should know and and uh, understand, and we will use a reference to in this. Such as BS5266, BS7909, um, etc., etc. Many of them. Okay. With regards to this document, it's a very, it's a very good document to have a great understanding of, because it is actually used all around the world. Now, I've done, I've done training. I've been privileged enough to do training quite, quite vast around the globe. Um, I've done training quite recently in the, um, in the UAE in a. Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and one of the things I noticed when working over there, delivering some of the training that we created, is when I actually looked into their regulations and their technical regulations, they had they had um, DWAR in Dubai, for example, but they they that was the legislative standard, but they had these um, 
regulation standards as well. And the one on the left, there, I, I believe, is the Abu Dhabi one. The one on the right is the latest Dubai one. But these, it's quite interesting. These are a free download over there. They're actually, um, they're actually written and, and sponsored by the, you know, the um, the local governments and um, obviously certain authorities. But they're a free download, uh, and we're talking about you know a lot of material. I mean, you can download them. Um, and this 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 Abu Dhabi one's actually very good as well because it's it's like the regs in that there's all the all the regulations are there, but they've also taken. Uh, for example, uh, illustrations similar to those in the on-site guide, also just illustrations of parts of the regulations like panel layouts and things and ideas of switch rooms and things. And they've added them in there. So there's lots of illustrations, there's lots of better guidance. And it's funny because it's as if they've taken the British standard and they've decided to improve it. So it might be worth just, you know, yourselves just looking into them just to see, you know, how the BS seven six seven one is taken and then just adapted slightly. From a technical perspective, there's not a lot of difference though. I mean, over in over in the UAE, they have like higher ambient temperatures, and they have risk of you know uh, IPX six with regards to dust. Sorry, IP six uh, six X with regards to dust and things like that. There's not a lot of difference. So this standard is exported through quite a large area around the world, and that's a good thing to remember. Now I've already shown, I've already waved the regs book in the air, and obviously the on-site guide. Um, but there's also, you know, I have this one which is now out and stuff, the Guides Notes Three. And I don't know if you've been fortunate enough to buy the NIC books or to buy any of the new Scallon books or Kitcher books or the the uh, Code Break is coming out soon. And yeah, books, 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 books. Um, there's there's this common common issue when these regulations get updated and there's a, there's a whole industry the industry gets all excited about the announcement of the new edition and you know you're brought through with all this new information these new regulations these new rules you'll have you'll have exhibitions you'll have cinema events evidently now uh, and um you know you have lots of opportunities and training is also experiencing this everyone is pushing training uh, it's it's a shame because you know the the standards of training have depleted significantly. A lot of people are just trying to waive the guarantee of the exam achievement in 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 electrician space instead of saying, look, yeah, you know this stuff, but let's talk about this stuff again to develop it further. Um, so it's it's a common it's a common um, feel right now that for, for Sparkies is, you know, regulation time. Let's just let's just throw more money away because that's that's quite often how it feels especially with things like regulation changes because a lot of these changes including in this standard they're either going to be introduced costs to your customer you know to yourself and then to your customer or very very simple changes in regulations but all of a sudden you've got to invest in books you may have to invest in new certificates you may have to invest in new software updates and you'll probably have to invest in training as well um, and so yeah the it's very hard to welcome these times really when these regulations come in. I myself, I um, I tr I did my apprenticeship from 1998, so I had the yellow book of the 16th edition, and it just turned to the blue book towards the end of my apprenticeship. So I've seen the 16th edition become the 17th, and I was just getting into training about then, and I noticed how how there was this huge um, build up in in momentum in the industry about the introduction of the new standard um, not so much as they were when we had updates here and here they weren't as grand because I don't know maybe the numbers the big thing but we've seen it now for a few years building up to the 18th edition the 18th edition was you know quite quite an event apparently um, but we're going to talk through this structure this core structure we're not going to highlight the changes we're going to talk through the whole book this is a regulations course series of videos i will highlight some areas in more detail such as for example afdds when i come to afdds i'll just cover them as normal as i would in the classroom so i'll talk about the devices i'll add a little bit of information about them but i won't go into them in great detail what i'll do is i'll create a separate video for that to back that up so that you kind of can stay on flow you don't have to completely slow down progression to then talk about something that really fundamentally mm, you know may not impact you so you know i'll mention it mention it's new give a little preview on it but then we'll pull another video in 
of much more depth and reference if you feel you want to consume that extra information. Okay. But moving forward, we got to talk about, you know, we go, we know, I mean, it's, it, it's very easy to say, oh, it's a money making exercise, but we do need to understand that, that regulations do need to progress. They do need to move forward because the way we change our use of electricity has changed. Um, you know, this is, this could be your typical living room on a new build these days. You know, 20, 20 years or so ago or so, there'd have been one twin socket behind that television. There'd have been one socket in the kitchen with the cooker switch on the other side. When you go to a new home nowadays, you've got numerous points of utilization all over the kitchen, numerous points of utilization all over the living room. We've got lights, lighting systems with Lutron systems and all these other um, weird branded ones but it turns out what they are is a series of circuits so instead of one light circuit arrangement you've got one light circuit feeding a driver unit which could have somewhere near 30 different strings of cabling leading off so that they can control all the lighting in different arrays we may have um, speakers in the ceiling we may have data in the home so you know fundamentally the the utilization of electricity has changed significantly and sometimes when changes come in, we introduce a regulation. And then sometimes when technology is developed, we have to actually then retract that regulation. We had that in the 16th edition, I think it was, with cage bonding. When cage bonding was introduced for bathrooms, a dedicated uh, four mil protected conductor. But then they introduced RCDs. And RCDs meant in the bathroom that the need of cage bonding was no longer there. So sometimes as we introduce new things, we have to take things away. And sometimes as we introduce new things or new technologies or new methods of connection, we have to adjust the way we used to do things before. So there is always this need to progress, this need to update. Um, there is obviously harmonization, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, th I mean, just, yeah, think about your typical home, your typical home, your smart house these days, everything is controlled to a central point. It's a completely different approach to how we used to do homes tw 10, 20 years ago. So things are moving forward. And it's not so much domestics, it could be commercial or industrial as well. You know, te technology innovations, we've got to adjust, we've got to adapt, we've got to keep on top of our of our knowledge on this. Further, uh, furthermore, we've got um, changes in protective equipment, changes in equipment itself. So we had wooden frame fuse boards, not, you know, a few, few, few years ago now. Uh, we have three or three six seven uh, semi enclosed rewirables, which are perfectly fine, perfectly normal, still in the regulations. Now we can still design with them. We have some electrical firms suggesting that they are a risk of fire uh, and illustrating that to clients to scare them into getting new fuse boards, which is a little unethical. But then we have obviously newer fuse boards, newer than this even, because we now have the Amendment uh, 3 versions of 17th edition, the fire rated ones. But we have obviously split load, we have RCDs, and as you'll see later through this book, we may even start introducing AFDDs into these boards as well. But you can see the you know the, the number of circuits has increased, the protective devices have improved and progressed. RCDs, SPDs, AFDDs. When these are introduced, we have to both accommodate them with the design of our systems, but we may even have to adjust our regulations to either enforce them or to allow you know or to accommodate them which is slightly different so these are the examples of why we have to update our understanding on the regulations then there's the harmonization thing which you've probably seen on numerous courses before we have obviously the british standard here the itbsi the jpl 64 committee uh, that's i should say 17 18th edition now really uh, have to comply with the European standard, Senelec. So if you ever you go to a harmonized document or a European standard in Germany, for example, they'll always start with 60364 with regards to low voltage electrical systems that come towards the BS7671 standard. We'll see an example of that later on. And then there's the IC standard above. Uh, simple harmonization, the idea of creating the single market in Europe, etc. Uh, typical harmonization. You'll notice good example actually um you'll notice as you go through the book if we went to part seven for example and we just as we went to the beginning of part seven if i actually went to, to page 239 if i go to the part seven special installation locations list i can see that i have 700 as general and i've got 701 702 703 456 there's no 707 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's no 7, 13. Um, that's because they exist. They're in Europe. Um, they're just not imported into our standard yet. I believe 713 may be um, electrical wiring and furniture. I could I could be wrong with that. But they're a standard that may be uh, one of our other methods of work, our other standards, our other British codes of practice may supplement, may improve safety for, may make those regulations redundant. And so they're not harmonized yet. So you'll notice some, some gaps in the book. That's just simply where harmonization hasn't yet been um, concluded. Moving on to the layout of the book, this is again, as I mentioned earlier on, when you pinched parts one to six, that's what you did. Is you, you grab parts one, two, three, four, five, and six. The appendices is a reference point, and seven is a reference point to the rest of the book. This is quite an a little, uh, quite a good illustration because I guess you understand the big picture of the book, and I'm going to remind you of this quite a number of times as we go through. So. Part one, scope, and object, and fundamental principles. This is all about telling you what the book is going to cover and what the book's intentions are and how it's going to achieve that. So when you have an electrical design, you need to know if this book is relevant and how it's going to be relevant and how it's going to achieve the relevance. And that's what part one does. It lets you know whether or not you need to actually pick up the book in the first place and what the intentions are of that book. Part two is just reference. It's just definitions. Uh, you know how definitions work. And it only really gets interesting when we get to parts three to six. So, again, I'm going to remind you of this as we go through. But if you're going to do any design, one of the first things you've got to do is, without sounding too obvious, assess the general characteristics. So, assess what is there or assess what is needed. So if you've got a client that needs a new, let's say, let's say you have a client that needs a, a shop to be rewired, you're going to go there and the general characteristics would be to assess the existing supply characteristics. So we'll see supplies in there. So what is their earthing arrangement? What is their supply protective device? Their lumber type of live conductors? And then we also consider what their, what they want of the electrical system. So what is their maximum demand once we've applied diversity? How will we achieve compatibility with the existing systems? How will we achieve maintainability? So, you know, all of those questions we have to ask ourselves at the initial point is in assessment of general characteristics. Once we've got that bit of information, we then need to know what the requirements are with regards to the protection that we have to achieve to comply with the fundamental principles of BS7671. The pr fundamental principles, which we'll cover in a minute in, part, in, part, in the part one video, is to ensure protection of safety persons and livestock, the safety of persons, livestock, and the buildings. And you know that's what we get to in part four. So we look at protection against electric shock, protection against thermal effect, protection against overcurrent, and protection against the voltage disturbance. Those are the, the key ones that we will look for. We have isolation and switching in there as well now, but. Those are the four common things we need to achieve protection for. We must decide if the protection is needed and how we're going to achieve that in all circumstances. Once we've done that, we move on. We select an array. So we need to know the requirements to select our wiring system, consideration of exter external influences, selection and erection of our cable sizes, our protective conductor sizes, our switching types, manual switching, emergency switching, functional switching. We have to select and direct. Once we've done that, we've got to commission it, and that's part six. So it's just like a job. You assess what you need, you've, you're told what to protect, you're told the restrictions of your selection and erection, you are told you have to commission, and that's how the regulations work, just like any installation. Part seven at the end is where, due to the nature of the location, Special location, special installation, special environment, bathrooms, swimming pools, saunas, marinas, um, inland vessels, horticultural, agricultural, um, caravan park, caravan, transportable unit, medical location, solar photovoltaic system, or an exhibition shows and stands, yada, yada, yada. Any of those are applicable to the scale of your system. You would then have to go to that part throughout the document, and that part will supplement 
those processes we've just discussed. But that's how the book is structured. And that's the kind of bigger picture I want you to understand. Because as we get towards the end of this series, and we have a question in an exam, which says something along the lines of a significant quantity of flammable material, and it'll ask you what the value of significant quantity is, you need to say to yourself, okay, well, that's a flammable material. And I'm obviously thinking about protection against a flammable material. So you'll say, well, that's a protection against the thermal effect. And by that time, hopefully you'll know, well, that's chapter 42. And then you'll go in there and you'll see that it's 25 litres. But, you know, you'll um, get to that point. So you'll break it down with your understanding of the larger structure of the document. That's where we want to get to. It's not about finding the answer in the book. And something that you won't ever hear me say is looking is look in the index. I I can't remember the last time I actually told someone on a training course to look in the index because we don't need it. Um, it's, it's there as a last resort in an exam if you need it, but if you understand the book, you understand the structure, you understand the layout, you won't need it. It won't be needed. All right? But that's what we're going to do through this part, uh, through this book. Just to finish this off, let's a uh, couple more slides. Um, just in case you haven't looked at these before, let's understand how to read a regulation number. So this will become evident as we progress. But when you have a regulation number such as this one, regulation 531.2.1, we always read from the left. So it's 553, 531.2, 531.2.1. It's not, you know, 53 and then 31. It's, you know, it's always read from the left. And it's part 5. Yeah, and then the next number goes with it, so it's 53, and that's chapter. So you'll notice that it's the third chapter of part five, but it's actually chapter 53. The very first part of BS 767 is part one. So when you look in the regulations and you look at the chapters, you'll notice the very, very, very first chapter in the book is chapter 11, because it's part one, the first chapter is 11. There is no part zero. So there is no chapter one. There is no chapter two, three, four, five, etc. So don't, yeah. You know, I mean, don't drag on with that. This is just basically just housekeeping from a training perspective. But do familiarise yourself with how to identify sections, groups, chapters, etc. Because if you do that, you'll start to identify the bold headings of the sections, and the bold headings of the sections are very important. Because when you come to a question such as uh, let's say the question is regards to the selection of a device for RCD protection. You'll need to know that that's selection and erection of wiring of, of uh, electrical equipment, part five. But then you go into there and you look for the chapter for the devices, and then you look at the the section title for RCDs. So in, in this case, in this example here, actually, this is an overcurrent protective device. So we go, okay, the regulation we're looking for is with regards to overcurrent protective device used to be against electric shock. So it's selection and erection, part five, and it's a switching device, so 53. Because 52 is regards to wiring, uh, live conductors and wiring systems. 53 is regards to devices and switches, etc. And once we're in 53, we're looking for something with regards to protection against electric shock, 531. And still, there's further division, because it's RCDs, overcome protected devices, and so then there's a subgroup of 531.2 and then there's a regulation. This section here, this this section here would have, uh, oops, would be uh, nice and bold and big for you to see so you can easily find it. All right, we'll get to that point and we'll kind of highlight them as we push through. But quite a lot of the times as we go through, we're going to say, right, let's 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 step back and say, right, where are we at? Are we in thermal effects? Are we in protection against electric shock? And then we'll break them down into smaller chunks so that you can kind of absorb them individually. And then we'll push through. We've got numbering. Any regulation that ends in dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four. That's on the international level. If it's now dot 101, 102, 103, then for the past edition, few editions, that's been a European specified regulation. So that means the regulation is in the European Senelec harmonized suite of standards, but does not exist on the international level. There are a couple of regulations that are dot 101, dot 102, dot 103. 
If it's a UK specific regulation, so it's in the UK only and is not in Europe, then it starts with dot two oh one, dot two oh two, two oh three, etc. Um, there's uh, quite a lot of those uh, ring final circuits being one of them. The new fuse boards, oh, sorry, sorry, the new the the fuse boards in the home, you know, these are UK solutions to problems, um, and so they're UK regulation numbers. All right, I mean, hopefully that's not too much of a mouthful, but do prepare to kind of go through the videos at your own pace. Do come back to me with any questions if you want. Um, or you can wait until I like do a stream. I'll give you some Skype information as well in a couple of days once I kind of um, finalize all that stuff. I need to kind of set that all up. But yeah, um, consume some of this, uh, some of these, some of these videos. Um, I'll get some more material out as soon as I can, pushing forward. But I won't upload this video until I've got a couple more to upload with it. So you can kind of, I want you to be able to consume a few videos at a time if you have that time. All right, but we'll, we'll, we'll move forward. And um, so the next video is going to be part one. All right, scope, object, and fundamental principles. Next video, I'll see you on that one.